Hey and welcome back to my mini React.js series. So this is going to be a follow-up video to the one hour React.js tutorial. And we're actually going to be putting our skills into practice and building this little notes application here. So as a quick demo before we start, um, on the left hand side here you can add new notes. I'm going to add like three notes here. And for each note there is a, going to be a title. And you can also add some, uh, just, you know, your actual note here. And this, the reason for this preview here is because this notepad is markdown enabled. So I can use the double asterisk to make things bold or add italics or I can add headers and even code blocks. So we're going to be building all of this in our tutorial here. And all of this code is available on GitHub if you need any help. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. All right, so let's start from the very beginning. So we first of all need to install Create React App, and then we can clean up Create React App, and we can talk about how we're going to structure our application. So step one is to navigate into our working directory, of course. So I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to CD here into my YouTube folder. And then I'm going to run my command to use my Create React App. So npx create react app, and then I'm going to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this one notes. Alrighty, so that looks like it works perfectly. So next we're going to navigate into that folder we just created, which is called notes. So I'm going to cd into notes. There we go. So this is our create react app project here. And then of course we're going to run npm start, which is to create our development environment. npm start. And what this will do in just a second is it'll open up my browser, go to localhost 3000, and we should see our spinning React logo. There we go, perfect. So step one, what I always do with my projects is I like to clean up the actual Create React App boilerplate a bit. So first of all, let's go ahead and open up our project in VS Code. So first of all, I want to go ahead and clean up all of the Create React App extra files that they've added. So my sort of standard process here is to delete app.test. I'm also going to delete index.css, logo.svg, report web vitals, and setup tests. So delete, move to trash, and there we go. So now we're going to have to fix some of these files because they depend on files we just deleted. So I'm going to go ahead and remove index.css, remove web vitals, remove that block of code just there. There we go, so that's index.js. Then in app.js, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the logo. I'm gonna keep app.css because this is where we're gonna put all of our styling. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just remove everything inside of div class name app. And let's just put in notes app like that. All right then, so let's go ahead and test this by going into here and refreshing and there we go. We see notes app. Now notes app is centered, which means React has got some default styling. So I'm going to go ahead into app.css and just command a delete to clear this file out. So this app does have some styling and I'm not actually going to go through the styling as this is not a CSS video and I felt it wouldn't be appropriate to, you know, spend 15 minutes talking about how to style this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload all of the CSS styles to that GitHub repository. So all you need to do is go to the link in the description, which should take you to this right here, the CSS file inside of the GitHub repository. And all you need to do is click on the raw option here and just literally copy this entire file, which is very, very short. It's just a few lines here. Copy this, go back into VS Code and paste this into your app.css right there. And what this does is add all the styling so we don't have to spend time going through that. Um, you should be fami fairly familiar with CSS in order to do this tutorial, um, but it isn't anything too complicated anyway. All right then, so let's just go ahead and save that and see what our application looks like. So you'll see we've got this nice little distressed background here, as you saw in the demo, and we have our font improved a little bit. All right then, so let's go ahead and get started on actually building out this uh, application then. So, of course, we're going to utilize components more heavily in this application because in the last one, we were only building a very simple blog, sort of one page. This one's going to have a few more elements. So we are going to be utilizing components a little bit more than we did last time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create two main components here, the main and the sidebar. 
The main is going to be the right hand side where you actually edit your note and the left is going to of course be the sidebar where you see your list of you know active notes. So I'm going to go to my source here, I'm going to create a new file, I'm going to go ahead and call it sidebar.js, oh can't type, and create another one and call that main.js. So these are our two components here, of course in addition to our app.js component. Inside both of these we're going to create some basic component boilerplate as we need. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a function, sidebar, very standard, capital S for your func for your component names. And then just down here I'm going to go ahead and export these as the default, sidebar, just like that, perfect. Now I'm going to do the same thing here for main.js, so function main and export default main, just like that. So now what we can do is we can actually go ahead and import these into our app here. So we have sort of our general structure going. So as you know, to import a component, you write them as if they're sort of, you know, HTML tags here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in my sidebar. I'm actually going to get an auto import here by VS Code, but I'm going to do it manually so I can show you. So sidebar, capital S and self-closing, and then main capital M and self-closing again, sidebar and main. I'm going to go to the top here. I'm going to go ahead and just import them. So import sidebar from dot slash, oops, dot slash for the current directory. And then if you get a kind of recommendation here via VS Code, you've definitely done it correctly. So I'm seeing sidebar, I'm going to put that in. And then I'm going to duplicate this line down and use some trickery here to right main. So we have our two imports. There we go. So if we save that, um, we actually have no content in these. So let's go ahead and render out something. So let's go ahead and return a paragraph and say sidebar in our sidebar file and return a paragraph that says main in our main file. Go to Firefox and there we go. Sidebar and main. So our two imports are working perfectly. So let's go ahead and get started on our sidebar then. That's going to be where we're going to sort of start all this because this is where we're going to start rendering out our list of notes and then we can go back into the main and look at how we're going to manage all this data in React. So in our sidebar file. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a div actually. And we're going to give this div a class name to match up with our styling. And the class name is going to be app sidebar just like that and that'll give it some basic border right and some padding and so on and the first thing we need to create therefore is the header so we had it in our header we had an add button and a little h1 so we're going to go ahead and create that app sidebar header so app sidebar header and inside of there we're going to have a h1 tag and we're going to add in there we're just going to put notes in there you can call this whatever you want for example you could have like your name and notes, I call this like James's notes or something, but I'm just going to call it notes. And then underneath that, we're going to create a button. This is going to be our add button. So I'm just going to write add. We're going to give this an on click handler later on. So our header's done. Now we're going to add um, the actual list of notes, add this the markup for it. So div class name of app sidebar notes. And each note is going to have an individual div called app sidebar note. So let's do that. Div class name app sidebar note. Just like that. And then of course you saw a couple of things inside of each note element. For example, the title of the note, the delete button, uh, the body, a, a short preview of the note, and also the last modified text. So this is pretty simple to mark up. So it is a, a first of all, a header. So an app, so I call this one sidebar note title. And inside of the title, we had a strong tag for the actual note title. So this will be whatever the title is. I'll just write title in there for now. And also in the title was a delete button, which we can do very similarly by adding a basic button here and just writing in delete. 
and underneath the title there we had a paragraph tag I'll have an extra space for that and there we had a little bit of preview so I'm just going to put note preview and then underneath that paragraph tag we just added a last modified indicator so I actually did that with the small tags because it was small text and I gave it the class name of note meta so metadata about the note and then this is going to have last modified and then a some sort of date here alrighty so that is the basic markup for our sidebar so let's go ahead and refresh here and we'll see that our CSS has done some nice work here and it's added some basic styling to our add button to our title here and to our notes with a little bit of a hover effect so next let's move on to styling up the main over here where we're actually going to edit our notes and then all of our markup sort of the boring stuff is done so we can get on with you know doing the real react functionality here so let's head into our main.js file and go ahead and start writing out some markup. So the markup in here is even simpler. What we're going to have is we're going to have a div. And this div is going to have a class name of app main, just like that. Inside of our app main, we're going to have a two sections. So if you remember from the demo, we had a upper section here where we have our text boxes and a lower section where we had our markdown preview. So this is going to be two divs. The first one is going to be called class name app main note edit. So that's the first div. The second div is app main note preview. And then that is all. That is the two sections. So inside these two sections, in the first one, we've got some just basic input fields. So we're going to have an input field for the title. So input, and this is self-closing. And we're just going to give it a couple of attributes here. So it's going to be a type of text. It is going to have an ID, just of title, so we can identify it. And we're going to have it set to autofocus. So whenever you hit the page, this means that it'll automatically be focused on, which we can see if we just go ahead and refresh the page. We're already typing in there. And this is just a nice little user experience improvement here and you can see it's already large and it's got a big font size for the title super useful what we're also going to do is we're going to add a little placeholder as well which actually no we're not going to add a placeholder because we're actually going to give it a default title of untitled so the placeholder will actually never be seen so we're not going to do that we're just going to have these underneath that of course we had a text area which is a slightly which is just a longer multi-line text box which is text area, self-closing. I'm going to give this an ID of body. It doesn't need a type. And we will add a placeholder to this one because there'll be nothing in it by default. So we could just write like, write your note here, something like that, which we can see if we go to here, it just has some gray text, which disappears when you start typing. And that is actually it for the text area. So that's all we've got to add for now. And then just below that, we're going to add some basic structure here to our preview. So you probably guessed, but we're going to need a H1 for our title, which is eventually going to show a title down here. And it is then going to have the actual preview, the actual preview of our note itself. So I'm just going to write, you know, note preview. Oh, we're missing, um, I wonder why there was no padding here. So we're just missing a class on the H1 here. So it is a class name of preview title. And this note preview is actually in a div. And it is called markdown preview. So preview title and markdown preview for these two. And if we refresh, we'll see it looks just like the demo application, which is awesome. But of course, there is no actual functionality yet. So let's get into our functionality. All right then, so because we have two sub components, and then of course our app main component, all of our information is going to be stored within app because both components need to have access to it. 
So if we stored, for example, our list of notes within our sidebar here, then main wouldn't be able to access it and app wouldn't be able to access it because they're at different levels on the hierarchy. So of course that means we're gonna to have to store all of our state within app. So we're gonna have a array of notes and they're gonna be stored in state. So let's go ahead and create that state. So of course const and then our array here to create our getter and setters. And uh, let's just call that notes and set notes. Our getter is notes and our setter is set notes. And we'll set that equal to the use state function. And our default is going to be an empty array, of course, because it's uh, an array of items. Our use state is underlined because we haven't imported it. So let's go ahead and import it. I'm going to put it at the very top. And that is going to be a named export from the React library. Import use state with those named export curly brackets from, whoops, not sure what happened then, from React just like that. So that's our notes state here. The component that's going to need our list of notes is going to be the sidebar. So what we're going to do is we're going to send this through as a prop on the sidebar. So sidebar also gets live access to this piece of state. So we're going to go down here to our sidebar and we're going to pass in notes. Now I'm going to call the prop notes obviously for consistency and set that equal to notes here with the curly brackets. So now if we go to our sidebar we can actually get that piece of state. So a little tip from last time was you can get props, of course, by typing in props into the uh, parameter here of the component. But a little trick is what you can do is you can actually destructure this. So in modern versions of JavaScript, there's something called destructuring. So whenever you send through an object, you can actually write out the object like this. You could just put some curly brackets as if you're about to write an object and name all of the keys in it, and they become local variables inside of this file, if that makes sense. So this is a bit of JavaScript knowledge, which is why the prerequisite for this is JavaScript. Um, but if you're not familiar, you can just have a quick lookup of it. But what we can do here is we can actually name one of the exports in the object. So if props is an object, we know that props has one key on it, which is the prop we just made, notes. So we can name that export. So we can type in notes here. And that basically takes notes out of the object and creates a local variable here for it. So we can access it just via notes. And you'll see me using this quite a lot as we go through. So now we have access to notes as an array. So what I can now do is I can now use that cool map function. So we're going to loop through our notes and create an individual note within our sidebar here. So what we can do is we can wrap this div here inside of that map function. So we can open up our curly brackets to start a JavaScript statement and we can type notes.map and then for each note we're just going to call it note for now and then of course do our arrow function here and then we're going to automatically return by just using brackets and we're going to take our div here and I'm just going to drag it into the center. And what that's going to do is it's going to output this div and all of its content for each note in the array. And we can access data about each note with this note variable. So cool. So if we go to Firefox, there's going to be no notes here. Now, the reason for this, obviously, is because we haven't created one yet. So let's go ahead and create a note because they're really simple to create. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a event handle onto this button. So whenever we click this button, we're going to do, you know, on add note, right? Now we can't add this, we can't actually write the logic for this function inside of sidebar because of course the data is all stored within app.js. So what we're going to do is we're going to call one of our prop based functions. And what will happen is when we call a function that's passed through as a prop, we can then call a function within our app, which is a really, really useful function of props. So for example, if we had a function here, now from now on, all of my event handle functions will be arrow functions and not in this style, like they were in the last tutorial, but arrow functions are identical, essentially. Uh, they just look a little different. So for example, if I have on add note equals brackets, and then our arrow and then curly brackets, and then let's say, you know, console log add, what we can do is we can pass this function through as a prop. So on add note, 
that's what we'll call the prop, and we'll just set it equal to onAddNote. And now whenever we call this here, oh, of course we have to name, we have to destructure that prop there. So now whenever we click this button, it's going to call on add note here, which is going to go to the props of the sidebar and actually call the function here where the sidebar was referenced, which is really, really cool. So if we save both these files and go back to Firefox, what we can actually do now is, well, we'll need our console up, but we press add, it works. So we're calling a function inside the parent. So inside then, what we're going to want to do is write some on add note logic, which is going to be as simple as updating our set note state and adding a new object to it. Each note, of course, will be an object because we want to store, you know, several pieces of data in each note. So we'll have, you know, four keys in each object and then we can have, you know, unlimited amount of objects. So what does each note look like? Let, let's create that. So let's go ahead and create a variable here. So const, let's call that new note. And then let's create an object. So curly brackets for our object. And we're gonna need some keys here. So we'll need an ID, a title for our title. We will need a body for the actual note itself. And also a last modified indicator for the last time the note was modified. For our ID, we ran some pro into some problems last time with IDs. We don't wanna ever duplicate these because we're going to be using it to identify which one was updated and also for passing through a key um, to the array so that it doesn't complain at us. So what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to use an external library to create this ID so we can assure we have a random ID every time. So this is our first time installing an external package into React. So the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to go to our terminal. We're going to press Control C to cancel out of our development environment here. And then we're going to use npm install. And what this is going to do is it's going to install an external package, an external dependency into our project. So this dependency is called React UUID. So React UUID. So npm install React dash UUID, like that. Press enter. And now that's done, what we have access to is this library, React UUID. So what we're going to do is just npm start to run our server again. And while that's working away, we can go ahead and start using it. So what we can do here is we can import this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to import it underneath React here. And this is actually a named export called, a default export, sorry, called UUID. And it is from React UUID, package we installed. And it is really simple to use this. So we just call this as a function here. And what that will do is it will create a random ID for our new note, which is perfect. Alrighty, so we have that done. Now our title, you can call it whatever you want. This is going to be the default of the new note. So I'm going to call this one untitled note, like I did in my example. I'm uh, missing a comma up there. The body is just going to be empty and our last modified is going to be the current date. So date.now in JavaScript. Missing a comma again. All right, so that's it. So now what we need to do is we need to append this onto our current array, which we're going to use the spread operator again for. So we're going to set notes, create a new array, which will have the new note, and then we'll spread on the existing notes. So a new array where we add in our new object and then we basically take all the objects out of the current notes array and put them into our new array. As simple as that. So now we can test that. All right, so let's go into here and press add. And there we go, there's our new note with our currently statically named title and note preview. But now we can go into our sidebar and we can actually populate some of this information now it's stored in our object. So, Let's go back into our VS Code here, head into the sidebar, and where we wrote title, we now know that note is an object. So we can actually write note dot, oh, note dot title, sorry, like that. And for our note preview, this can be note dot body. And for our last modified, this can be note dot last 
modified. Just like that. And there we go. Untitled note, and then our description would be here if we had some body text. Now, of course, this last modified doesn't look very pretty. And another thing you'll notice is the note body here. This would be the entire body, which of course we don't want. So note body first, what we're going to do is we're going to use that conditional rendering like we looked at in the last one. And what we're going to do is we're going to check if there's a note body. So if there's a note body, we're only going to look at the if there's a note body, not the else. So we can du use double and. So if there's a note body, do this. Otherwise, well, do nothing. So what we're going to do if there's a body is we're going to use substring, which is going to basically take a certain portion of the string off. So let's say the first 100 characters and display that. So we're going to do note.body.substring, S-U-B-S-T-R. And then I'm going to do the first zeroth character to the first 100th character. So from characters 0 to 100, I want to take. And then I want to append onto that dot dot dot. Now for our last modified, we want this to be a nice readable date. So what there is is actually a built-in JavaScript function for this now, where what we can do is we can wrap this in a new instance of date. So we can create a new instance of date on our last updated timestamp. And then use dot to local date string, which looks like this. And this takes two parameters, the locale, so for me it's engb, and then an object. And this object can take some different formatting parameters, which for me so far will actually already look pretty good if I refresh. As you can see, 06 slash 02 slash 2021, but it's just missing a date here. So what I'm going to do is in my options string, uh, object, sorry, I'm going to go ahead and say I want an hour in the two digit format and I want the minute in the two digit format. Just like that. Cool. So now if we refresh, we see our full timestamp here. So perfect. So that is all done. What we've done here is we've essentially completed the sidebar, except for the delete button, which we will um, we will do right now, actually, because we can do it right now. So let's go ahead and do a very similar thing like we did to on add note, which is going to be on delete note. So we can do on on click here and we can do on delete note. Now on delete note, of course, isn't as simple as on add note because there is no data before adding a note because you're creating one. Whereas on delete note, we need some kind of reference to the note we're deleting. So this is going to need an ID, which we have in note.id, because the note object. But we of course know that this is gonna now automatically run. So we're gonna to have to bind this to the button by wrapping it inside of a arrow function like this. There you go. Now on delete note, like on add note, is going to be a function run inside of the parent in app.js. So we're gonna copy this, add it to our list of props here and then create that prop. So in app.js, let's go ahead and make this prop on our on delete note, on delete note. So we're passing the function down to our parent here or up to our parent, sorry. And then we can actually create our function logic. So on delete note will be a simple function like last time. And what we will want to do is use the filter JavaScript function, which is really cool. So filter is another one of the modern ES6 JavaScript array functions. And what it's gonna let us do is it's going to let us write a little bit of logic um, for when it loops around the array. So essentially what this function is going to do is it's going to loop through each item in the array. And only if the logic on each loop passes true, then that item will actually stay in the array, otherwise it will be removed. So what we can do is we can, what we can do is we can just do a little check inside of those, inside of that loop logic to see if the ID is the one we're deleting or not. And if it is not, then we can let it stay. But if it is the ID, then we can return false and we can actually 
remove it from the array, which is really cool. So what we're going to do therefore is we are going to, of course, set notes because we want to set, but inside of here, we can run that filter function. So we can say we want notes to still be in there, but we want to filter on them. And inside of that, for each note, we want to check the current loops, the current iterations note ID like this, and then compare it to the note ID coming in. So on delete note, of course, we brought in the, um, the ID, I'm gonna call this ID to delete. So it's clear, cause this is kind of difficult syntax to read. So ID to delete. So this is our iteration logic. So for each note kind of like map, we want to look at the note ID and then if it's not equal to the ID to the delete, then it's going to pass true and it's going to stay in the array. Otherwise it's going to pass false and therefore it's going to be removed from the array, which is super cool. So that's it. That's it for delete note. So if you actually tested that, it would delete the note and that's it. So if we refresh, let's add, you know, four notes, delete, delete, delete. You can't see the difference between them, but there you go. It's really as simple as that. We've already built add and delete note. All right then. So the next move is going to be to look at the current active note. This is going to be our last piece of functionality here. So the active note, this is going to be the one that we are currently looking at on our right hand side here. And this is also so we can populate some props inside of this right hand side main panel over here. So if we have a note, what we're going to want to be able to do is click on this and then it will store the ID and state, the current active note. And then this component can look at that and say, get the data from it and display it all. And then it can actually send any changes back to our main app array. So that sounds a little complicated, but it's really not. So let's get into it. So inside of here, what we're going to want to store is again, because we want to share it across main and sidebar. We want to store a piece of state that is going to store our current active note. So let's call it active note and set active note. You state and let's set it default to false, i.e. no active note. Now what we want to do is we want to actually set this active note when a note is clicked, which of course will be in the sidebar component. Now sidebar will actually need to know both of these. It'll need to know the active note and which, and also it will need the function to set it. So what I'm gonna do out of interest here is give both this getter and setter directly to our sidebar component. So I'm gonna give it active note and set active note and set those equal to the same named getter and setter here. So this is quite a lot of props. As you start to get into advanced React, you'll start to use things like state managers, which are to avoid problems like this, where there's too many props being passed through. But this is quite a small project, so we're kind of gonna hit the limits of how many props we'd want to send through. This is fine for this size of project. But we've sent all of our props through here, active and set active. And we can go ahead and grab those um, inside of sidebar. So sidebar now has active note and set active note. Cool. Uh, this is prettier, by the way. Whenever I save, uh, prettier is a formatter that attempts to clean up my code, make sure it doesn't go too far off the screen um, so you can read it easily. So that's why if I save and things randomly change, it's a, uh, this here, which you can install. It's a VS Code extension. So anyway, active note and set active note. So what we're going to want to do here is um, whenever I click on a note, so whenever I click on one of these divs here, sidebar note, I want to set the active with the current ID. So that's simple, right? I can just add an on click and I can set active note and set the ID, right? Well, yeah, I can. But the only problem here is this would run by default. So I need to bind it by using a arrow function and that is it yeah I just want to do an on click and set the active note whenever I click so let's test that oh of course yeah so that is working but we can't actually see this working yet because there is no indication we'd want this to go blue now I've added a style for this 
on app sidebar note, which is called active, just like that. So if I was to save that and have a look, we'll see that it's now blue. So we want this to happen only when this ID, the current notes ID in the loop and the list matches the one that's set as active in the state. So we're going to want to add a dynamic class name, which we actually did cover in the first section of this. But we want to have a static part and then a non-static part. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the string builder for this. So I'm going to copy the um, original class name here and remove all of this and open our curly brackets here. Now the back ticks allow us to use what's called the string builder, which is a JavaScript function. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, add in our original class here and then go in this side of the string builder then use JavaScript again. It's a little bit confusing but it's a really really clean way of doing this rather than using like the append plus or whatever. So dollar sign and open up curly brackets and now I can write some JavaScript logic in here. So I can say if note.id equals 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 identical to the current active note then I can use the um, the conditional logic again with and 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 say and and just return active because whatever this whatever these JavaScript statements return inside of the string uh, the dynamic string builder here will just be printed out into into the string right so I can do this and then back in Firefox if I add I can add let's say three notes which have when I click will now highlight because we can confirm that it is stored in state as the active note. So that's all right. So what we need to do then is go into our app now and send this active note to the main function. Now the main function does need more than just the active sort of ID. It's going to need the all of the object for whichever note is active. So we're going to want to pass through the current active note as a prop here. But we can't just send through the active note state because this is just an ID. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a little helper function here. So just underneath on delete note, I'm going to create a helper function called uh, get active note. Now what get active note is going to do is it's going to get the current it's going to be a super a quick sort of one liner here that's going to get the current stored ID and find it in the array and then return the entire object. So let me show you. So get active note is going to return notes.find, which is another ES6 function here. And it's going to loop through each note and I can write some logic. So the only one here that returns true is the one that's found. So I'm going to say if the note ID inside of this inside of this logic is equal to the current active note, and whichever one of these returns true, this is going to actually return the object of the current active note, and then we can just run this function inside of the prop, get active note, and then of course it's a function, so two brackets, and we do want this one to run automatically. So this one we want it to always be running. So it's, this is always passing through the current active note. So there is a use for automatically running a function as a prop. So that's all we need to do there. So now main has access to the current active note, which is really, really cool. So let's go into main. Now main, we can now start, you know, rendering some of this out. So for example, in our preview title, let's add note.title. Uh, but we are missing the adding the prop here. So we're going to do a uh, we're going to deconstruct it again and we're going to add in the name of the prop which was I think it's active note. So we're going to destructure the props here into this active note and therefore this is called active note.title and this one is active note dot body just like that. And let's go ahead and preview that. And yeah, untitled note. And we don't have a body yet because we haven't added any functionality. So let's go ahead and, well, make these do something. So these two, what they're gonna want to do is 
they are going to want to update whatever the current active note is and then it will actually update it live. Let's go ahead and do that. This is going to be probably the most complicated part of the whole thing here. So we're not going to create local state for these because what they're actually doing is they're directly updating this active note that we're bringing through here. So what we will want to do instead is we will want to essentially run a updater function that runs in the parent directly on the on change handlers for these. So rather than updating state with these, they're going to update a part of a array in the parent state. Now that does sound really, really complicated. So let's go ahead and do some basic things first. So let's go ahead and add values onto these. They are going to be, we need to set the actual values, what's going to be in these boxes. And it's going to be in these boxes, the active note dot title and the active note dot body inside of the text area. Now at least we have these here, as you can see. Now, when we unchange these, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to run a function that we're going to create within here. So we're going to call that function, uh, what should we call it? On edit field. This will start to make sense as I write it out. Now on edit field, let's send through two parameters. So we're going to use it in both our text area here and inside of our input. So we're going to, the first one we're going to, have to say is which one we are editing. So this one is the title. And then the second parameter we're going to send through is the current well, on change value. So get the event here and send it to e.target.value. Okay, and then we're going to copy this and use it inside of our text area as well. But this one is going to be body. So let's actually create this on edit field function that we're sending these parameters to. So up here at the top, I'm going to create a function called on edit field. And that's going to take the key we're updating. So either title or body right here, and then the actual value. like that. And what we're going to do here is we're going to update the array inside of the app.js where the state is. And we're going to run a function up there. But what we're actually going to do here is we are going to construct the object that we're sending back. So in fact, no, let's create the function we're going to call first. So in order to not confuse you, eventually this, this on edit field is going to do something. But in app, we're going to need to receive that change. So let's call this function. So we have on add note, on delete note. Let's create on edit note. Or let's call that on update note. And what this is going to do is we're actually going to use map in a slightly different way. So map's really cool. What map does is when it loops through each one of, it loops through an array and it allows you to modify each item in the array for however you want to display them. But this also means what we can do is we can actually use map to modify an array. So what I mean by this is let's say we create a constant variable here and we call it updated notes array like that. And then we run map on notes like we do and we get for each note. And instead of an automatic return, we're going to open up curly brackets here, which is going to allow us to write a proper block of code. And what we're going to do is for each of these, for each loop here, for each iteration, we're going to check if the current note ID is equal to the note that we are um, editing. So what we can do is we can say if the note ID is equal to the current active note, then what we want to do is we want to update it with our new object. So on this loop here, if we're on the current active note, so if 
so inside this loop, this means that we're looking at the correctative note. So if we are, then what we're going to do is we're going to modify this current iteration with a completely new object of data, which is going to come through when we run on edit note. So this will be updated note, the updated note object. So we're going to return updated note, which means replace this iteration in the array with updated note. Otherwise, which we can just do down here, we're going to return the original just note of the iteration. We don't want to modify any other iterations on that array. Now with our updated notes array, we can just simply update the state, right? So we can do set notes and run our updated notes array that we just created. So as simple as that. So this means now all we need to do is we need to send, we need to fire on update note from our main with an updated object. So an updated title, an updated body, and an updated last modified timestamp. That's an important one. So let's go ahead and take this on update note and pop it into our main and just put it on update note. And now we have all the functionality we need, right? Because all this is going to require is that updated object, as long as the ID is the same, because that would kind of mess up the original array. So if we go to our main here, we need to get that prop from the destructuring on update note, and then on edit field can just run that function on update note. But we just need to send through some form of object here. Now this object is going to be a reconstruction of the current active note. So we know that an active note has four different fields, ID, title, body, and last modified. We're going to want to update all of these except for ID. So ID is going to be equal to active note.id. We're going to get the current active note ID and set it exactly the same. We don't want to change it. But our title, this will be based on our key and value. So what we're going to do here is, well, actually we're going to do something cool here. So because this could either be title or body and our key is named identically, like here, what we can actually do is we don't have to do, it's going to be either or title or body updated here. So we can just do a dynamic key here, which we can do by wrapping it in square brackets, typing key, and whatever key is, it will target either title or body in whichever scenario we're running on update field. And we can set that to value like that. Super simple. And then last modified, this is just going to be the same as we did last time inside of app.js, which was date.now. So we always have the last modified date whenever something's edited. So this one's the kind of cool part here. And you know what? I actually think that is all. So let's go ahead and take a look. So active note is undefined here. So this means that inside of our main, we're trying to access the title when active note is false. So what we can actually do here, as is really cool, is just before we return all this, this is basic JavaScript, right? So before we return JSX, Let's go ahead and run an if statement, which is going to say if there is an active note, or sorry, if there's not an active note, so this is the Boolean not here, so this is going to reverse this. So if active note is true, um, this is going to do the opposite. So if an active note doesn't exist, then let's return a different set of JSX. And I actually created some styling for this. So it's div class name no active note. And you can write whatever you want in here. Um, no note selected. And this will remove our error here, as you can see, because we're not trying to render out something that doesn't exist. And there we go. So no note selected. So if we add, then there we go. It's rendering out our untitled note. Let's go ahead and change this to example note. And there we go, it's updating that object through on update note. And we can see it here because this is rendering also the live output and it's updating here and it's updating here of course as well, which is freaking awesome. And some body 
text just like that there. Oh, so here's an issue. What we've gone ahead and done here is we've gone ahead and removed the actual title because what we're doing here is we're only, we're not adding all the existing fields. So example, if you're updating title here and setting it to whatever, we're actually deleting body. So there's actually gonna be a better way of doing this here um, than doing this. Let's spread out the existing whatever that is in active note already and only modify the ones we want to modify so we know we're not changing id so we can remove that and let's go ahead and get whatever's in the active note and just like what we did to the arrays we're going to do dot 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 which is going to spread all of the keys out of active note and add them so then we're only modifying the ones we want to modify and everything else will stay as is so that's really important a little mistake on my side then um, I still make mistakes all the time. Um, you will make mistakes as well. It's not a problem if you make mistakes. So active note like that. Let's add one, go into here. And now if we type something, yeah, both of them stay. So we're not modifying, we're not deleting the other key when we update one of the keys. So that's perfect. Um, so what else is left to do here? So we have adding notes and we can update different notes and we can modify them. So we are missing a couple of things here. So first of all, the markdown isn't showing. So if we were to write stars in here, hello, we aren't rendering our markdown preview here. So this one's really, really easy. So we're actually going to use a, another library for this. And that ri library is called React Markdown. So let's go ahead and install that. So we'll go to item, control C out of it. And we're going to go ahead and npm install react markdown. Great. And then we can go ahead and npm start again. Cool. So we have access to it. So if we go into Visual Studio Code, we can go to our main here. And we can go ahead and import React Markdown, which is called exactly how it's written here. So React Markdown from what we just typed, React Markdown, like that. And this is how the component looks, capital R, capital M, as components always are. And all we actually have to do here is we actually replace the div that we are wrapping our current um, body we want to convert to Markdown with the react markdown tags so they become the tags that we use instead just like that so instead of divs we have react markdown and that means whenever we go into our application here and type markdown react markdown is actually going to render that out as html tags so that is done so that was super super simple the last thing here i think this is the last thing is to go ahead and make it so whichever the most recently updated note is will show at the top. So if we go ahead and update this note, it will go to the top and this one won't be at the top anymore. So this is simple. We're going to use another ES6 JavaScript function and this is going to be in the sidebar. And what we're going to do here is at the top, we're going to create a, a, a modified version of this note array here, which is going to be sorted. So we can do, we can create a, an array called sorted notes. And we're going to take the normal notes and we're going to use the sort function, which um, is, gives a callback. And inside the callback, you get an A and B, as you can see by this little description here. And you can compare A and B together. Now, this, this is quite a complicated function. Um, so I definitely encourage you to look this one up. But essentially, um, in order to create descending order, which means the uh, most recent is at the top. We're going to want to compare B to A like this. Do B negative A. And this is going to do a, if that's true, it's going to push things up the array. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare B and A. And inside of B and A, we want to compare this. This is um, comparing two elements of the object together as it does a uh, loop. This is a sorting algorithm. So on B, we want to look at last modified. And on A, we want to look at mass modified. And we're going to go ahead and compare those together, comparing B to A first. And this will mean that the 
most recently modified, we push to the top of the notes array. And then we're going to take sorted notes and replace it down here. So that will go ahead and work. And this is really cool. So because this is um, React, of course, any changes here will be automatically updated down here. So let's go ahead and add a couple. And then this one here, change it, and it goes to the top. Okay, so that's done. So yeah, great. We have a finished application here. And in the next section, we're actually just going to do a little bonus part, which is to get these notes to stay on your computer in local storage. So I'll see you in the next section. All right, so a little bonus here. Um, this is obviously an optional feature if you are still watching at this point, but it is going to be to make all of these notes persist in local storage. So local storage is a little um, storage part of your browser where you can just essentially store key value pairs. So there's one big object in your browser storage and inside of that I can create a key, for example, notes, and I can store any string that I want up to a certain size. Which means um, what I can do is I can actually convert this array of notes to a string using something called JSON stringify. And then I can pass that back into uh, this array again when I retrieve it from local storage. And this is actually really, really easy to do. It's basically going to be two lines of code. But as you'll see right now, if I refresh the page, all my notes disappear. But that'll be fixed with this. So all I need to do is I need to use an effect hook. Now, this is going to be a different use of the effect hook than what I explained in the last video. In the last video, I used effect hooks as a way of getting data from an API, which if we added an API to this to store it to a server, which would be the way better way of doing this, this that's what we would use. But we're actually going to use the effect hook this time to watch a variable and run code when that variable changes. So in this case, when we write our use effect hook and write our logic in here with our dependency array, we're going to put the notes array as our dependency. So we're going to use this to run as a side effect of note changing. And what we're going to do is we're going to store it in local storage every time it changes. So every single letter that's written is automatically saved in the browser. And it looks like this, local storage, small l capital S like that, local storage. And then it's a function on the local storage API here. So it's called set item, local storage dot set item. And what you do is you give a key and a value. So our key is called whatever you want. This is just a reference name for it. So, uh, you know, notes, <laughs> anything you want. Um, and then the value for it. So the value is going to be a stringified version of this array. We can't store anything other than strings in here. As you can see, uh, it'll say somewhere in here that it is a string, as you can see there, string. You can't store an array. If you store an array in here, it won't work. So we use a handy little function here called JSON stringify, which converts any uh, you know JavaScript objects or strings into a str an actual string rather than what it used to be. And in there, we pass in our notes, our actual notes array, which is why we're depending on it. And that's all. Whenever we update the notes array in any form, it will be stored in local storage. But how do we retrieve from local storage? Now we're only retrieving when the application initially like boots up. So we can actually make it the default state for notes. So what we can do is we can say, instead of an empty array, we can say local storage dot notes, which is our reference name here. So we can just do local storage dot notes and we can just pass that. So we're gonna have to run this inside of JSON dot pass just like that. And now whatever's in there will be set like this. But this would actually error out if this was a fresh browser using this because there would be right now in mind, there'll be an empty array stored in here. But for some people may not have an empty array because they're visiting your site for the first time. So while this is valid now, we need to use an else, which we can do in one line using another little handy JavaScript feature of conditional rendering, which is a sort of else function. So if this returns false I, or undefined, we can just say double pipes here and then an alternative value if this is false or undefined. 
and I'm just going to say an empty array. And that is actually it. That's all we need to do to fully sync, our, sync up our application to the built-in local storage API. Save that, refresh our page, add some notes. This is my note. And I'm going to store some code in here. I'm going to store some HTML tags. And I'm going to refresh the page and it's all still there. Working absolutely perfectly. So there we go. That's how you create a notes app from start to finish. As a sort of uh, continuing on from this tutorial, try and extend this application with new features in React to really enhance your learning on this. Because again, you don't learn until you really practice. Following tutorials was not how I learned. Um, you really need to go out there and, and actually write code that you haven't seen before um, and that you're creating from scratch using things that you've learned like state and effect hooks and JSX and so on. So good luck and I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial.